Everybody I'm back in another video. So um there's a like okay. So I kinda said I was gonna review this. Uh that's probably not gonna happen. Cause I uh read it in, into it a little bit and uh I just don't think I like it enough to finish it actually, so we're just gonna let that hang out there. Maybe if I do finish it, I'll give it a review, but I don't think I will. It just felt kind of weird. And I probably should... I don't think I've showed this off yet, but, uh... This is my... This is my, uh, art project I did. It's my sculpture. So, yeah. It's not very good, honestly, but... It's decent enough. So there you go. It's not the best thing ever, but whatever. It works, I guess. Um, <clears throat> as you can probably tell by the title, we're going to review Riverdale number 2 and Spider-Man number 16. Um, so we can start with Spider-Man. Um, so, um, this is kind of interesting because you start off with a black cat, and, uh, she is, um, uh, sort of just, like, taking back some of her territory, I guess, because, uh, somebody, you know, stole some of her uh, like one of her buildings or territory or whatever you want to call it, I guess. And she, uh, blows it up and makes a, it's like a, uh, you know, a warning to the other people and that, um, you know, like to their boss, I guess. Um, so she does, she blows up that building and then, uh, Miles Morales is talking to his mother about how he got his powers and everything that's kind of interesting I haven't really read a whole lot of Spider-Man so I'm like really behind on this I have no idea what's going on I guess she found out his secret identity and you know she, she's like how'd you get your powers and he's like spider bite and she doesn't believe him so she kind of has to tell her that Uncle Aaron uh, stole a spider and it bit him and he goes off and some uh, guy stole a purse so he goes and chases him and he beats up a bunch of uh, people and gets the purse back and there's a nod to John Romita Sr. the Romita's bar and grill so that was pretty funny so he goes and chases down a guy with a, that stole some lady's purse she doesn't or he doesn't find it and then uh, Gank is being interviewed, and he uh, almost gets a kiss or whatever. And they make a nod to uh, Gank being that leads, basically. I thought that was pretty funny. If you can read that at all. But, you know, it says, like, it doesn't have to be your real name, just something you to call you. Uh, Ned. Ned. Call me Ned. So, you know, that was kind of funny. And then it ends, so. He's about to be kissed by some girl I've never seen before, so. There you go. Um. So we have that. And now we have Riverdale number two. Now this paper is really weird, and like, I grabbed it, and I'm like, this feels like really odd. Um. Now the weird thing about this is, if you have seen Riverdale at all, you'd know it's like, you know, it's supposed to be like a serious take on the Archie mythos because Archie is so outdated and stupid. Not literally, I enjoy Archie, but I'm just saying for the, most people think that Archie's lame. So, you know, they're trying to update it and make it more modern. And more, um, sophisticated, I guess, for the younger genera- or the, yeah, the younger generation. So apparently, 
Archie and uh, Jughead, Betty, Veronica, and jo yeah, Josie got detention for having a food fight. So I thought that was really stupid. Like, they all just have a giant food fight in the cafeteria. Even though it's supposed to be like a serious rendition of Archie. Whatever. Um, so Mr. Weatherby can just figure out who did it. And it's kind of like, uh, it's sort of like, you know, your typical high school movie or whatever. Just all five of them locked in the room together. And then Archie goes around trying to figure out who did it, kind of. He asks Josie what happened, and apparently Archie was, uh, apparently Archie, like, went on the cafeteria table, one of the cafeteria tables, and, like, just started playing his music. And then somebody threw some food at his face, and then there was a food, food fight or whatever. So then he asked Veronica what happened, and Veronica was with Kevin trying to, like, make some sort of straight gay alliance thing. And then Reggie came and bothered them. And then Reggie got food in his face. And then uh, Archie asked Ver Betty what happened. And apparently Betty was reading. And then Cheryl came by and bothered her. And then apparently she threw some food at the back of Cheryl's head. So that started the whole big war thing. And then, you know, Archie give Archie kids the thing about Principal Weatherby is he tells them that if they fess up, then they'll just get to go home. So Archie tells Principal Weatherby what happened, and they all go to Pops and have a milkshake, and they hang out. So, there you go. Um, for Spider-Man, I would give this book like a, let's say, uh... A minus. Yeah, because the writing, I mean, it's got pretty good writing. Like, there's nothing really wrong with it, even if I don't know exactly what's going on. It's still pretty good writing, I thought. Uh, Riverdale. I'll give this book, like, a, I don't know, C or something. Yeah, we'll give Riverdale, like, a C, because it's, yes, it's, because it kind of spits in the face of the show. Not that the show is like the best thing ever, but it kind of spits in the face of the show. Because the show is supposed to be dramatic and... Uh, dramatic and more angsty. And they're having food fights, so it's not really dramatic. And the writing just isn't all that good in Riverdale anyway, so... Yeah, those are my reviews. Um, if you like it, then I appreciate you watching it, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you want, you can leave a, leave a comment or whatever floats your boat. I don't really care. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.